kitchen wall is so much more interesting in the art studio than in the kitchen. Let's have a look. Hello lovely butterfly, welcome back to my channel where it's all about connecting you with your creative enthusiasm and today we're doing that with kitchen roll. First things first, the way you rip your kitchen roll will give you either a straight line or a wonky line. To obtain that second effect you have to start ripping on the non-pre-perforated side. I'm going to use this piece of kitchen roll as a mask underneath a stencil and this will allow me to create more interest in the color variation just playing with some distress ink. Now what I'm doing here with distress ink I could be doing the same thing with some kind of pastel or with paint or with whatever medium it is you want to use. The only thing you have to keep in mind is to keep moving that mask or that piece of kitchen wall as long as your paint or other heavier medium is wet and that your stencil on the other hand doesn't move. Now you can also use this without a stencil and just use the piece of kitchen wall as a mask of course. I did have some ink go where it wasn't supposed to go, but that's okay. Nothing my kneadable eraser cannot solve. And there we go. Technique number one, use kitchen roll as a mask. For technique number two, I'm taking a new piece of paper and this time I'm going to use my piece of kitchen roll as a stencil instead of working with a stencil. To keep it simple I'm just going for a rectangle but I'm going to need some help to keep that piece of kitchen roll in place. So just sizing it down and then taking masking tape to hold it down. I could go back in with the distress ink but let's spice it up a little and do it with some modeling paste this time. Just make sure that you work away from the edge from your piece of kitchen roll so that you don't push the medium underneath. And of course you need a medium that will stay on top of the kitchen roll and that will not just sink in. So if I want to colorize my modeling paste I cannot use a spray ink because the piece of kitchen roll will just absorb it and then it will stain the paper. Instead I'm just scraping some uh, charcoal I'm using here but I could be doing this with a pastel or with a neo color or just with a pencil just grade a, a pencil on top of your modeling paste and then push it in the color or colorize your modeling paste before you apply it on the stencil in this case the kitchen roll there we go technique number two kitchen roll as a stencil for number three I needed this to be dry and I'm going to add the third technique on top of the first technique. This time I need something that has a lot of pigment to it. So I'm choosing Colorex ink, which is a watercolor, but as you can see, it's like this flashy intense color. I did add some water to it. And before I go in, I need to protect the rest of my page because I don't want any color go outside of that circle. And that might happen with this technique. I'm using the second half of that wonky ripped kitchen roll, dabbing it into the color and then just slightly touching the paper with it. And this is enough. I didn't want to add any more because it's very intense. If I had added more water, the splatters would have been lighter. That's the exact same technique that I used for this A Layer A Day challenge. A lot of you were asking about it, how I did that background. That's the exact same thing. The splatters, the distress inks, that's it. For the next technique, I'm going back in with my circle stencil and this time I'm going to use the kitchen roll to apply color. I opted for spray inks. These are distress spray inks. 
For the first layer, I'm adding some water to the color and then just dabbing it onto the paper. What I'm doing here with the stress ink, I could be doing with any kind of medium that is wet enough to be picked up by the kitchen roll. And the reason that I'm starting with the water is that I first want to blend the color slightly together and now I'm going in without water so that I can intensify it on the edges and create a kind of shading. You know that I'm all about shades when I'm doing circles. Applying the color this way will give me this funky texture within the color. And of course, kitchen roll is extremely important when it comes to cleaning our studio. <laughs> Next up, technique number five, I'm going to use the kitchen roll to lift color. And I'm doing it this time with paint. Again, I can do it with any wet medium. So often when we add splatters, if we just leave them to dry like that, they're pretty intense, pretty, pretty much in your face. To soften them down, I just dry them halfway. And then I lift the rest of it using my kitchen roll. Now here I'm just lifting splatters, but if I do the same thing on a painted surface or an inked surface that is still wet enough, and I use my kitchen roll in a frumbled way to pick up the paint, that will give me some nice texture again within the color. For the next step, I need my stencil to be clean again, because this time I'm going to use my kitchen roll to add texture in modeling paste. And what I'm doing here with modeling paste, I could be doing with wet paint or any other medium that is thick enough to pick up the texture. I could just frumble my piece of kitchen roll and then press it in there to create lines for my texture, but this kitchen roll has this funky bubble texture to it, so I'm going to use just that. I'm checking which side has the more texture and pressing that one down with my brayer. I get this texturized surface, which you cannot see as long as it is plain white. So I'm going to add color to that. I shouldn't have given it a little bit more time to dry, but hey, you know the impatience, right? When you just want to add the color to see what texture it is you have going on. So I'm using a fluid acrylic here and just applying it with my finger and that right corner there wasn't just completely dry, but look at that texture. And that is just one layer of paint on top of it. Et voilà, five cool techniques to try out with your kitchen roll. Let me know in comment if you know of another one. I'll see you back here next time. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses. Mm -hmm.